Hello everyone, my name is Melanie Jacob and I'm a diversity and inclusion consultant. Today, I am going to be having a conversation with Sonia Iraguha from Rwanda, who is a branding strategist as well as future entrepreneur living in Paris. <laughs> Hi Sonia, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Hi, thank you for having me. I'm doing great. Okay, so can you tell us a little yeah. bit about your... Oh, sorry. I I'm saying we're just surviving COVID. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but can you tell us where you're right now? Okay. Um, right now, I'm in Kigali, Rwanda. I've been here for the past six months. Um, once the borders opened, I was just like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> so I was just like, bye. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but so I don't know where I'll be um, towards the end of the year. But for now, this is where I'm at. Yeah. Okay. And then can you tell us about why you have that like French connection? Like what brought you to France being that you're from Rwanda? Okay. Yes. So, um, so what brought me to France? So three years ago, I was, um, I was working for a brand. I was working for a jewelry brand in Nairobi where I lived and, um, I really loved it. And I, and I would create events and pop-ups through that brand and meet other, um, amazing designers and other brand owners for different parts different types of companies and products and and I realized that there was a shortage on the branding and promotion aspect and helping um, these brands scale and get to another point of their business so I decided to apply for masters around you know luxury um, around fashion um, just so that I can touch at every every field and then yeah and and, and I decided to go to France because I was like my family always spoke French. I barely spoke French. And I was like, I'm tired of my cousins disrespecting me. So I'm going to go to France and, and work on my French and get a master's degree at the same time. So yeah, <laughs> that's how I got to France. Okay, that's a very interesting story. <laughs> and like, what can you say about your French now? Like, how has it improved? I mean, it has improved. Um, once I got to once I got to Paris, um, I think within the first within four months, I got a retail job. So I was working retail, a retail internship. So I had to speak French. Um, so that kind of put me in, you know, in the in the deep end. And I had no other choice but to learn on the job and to just pick on vocabulary because that was one thing. Because the school I was in was a it was an international school. Everybody spoke English. My friends all spoke English, um, and so I needed to put myself in situations where I'd I'd be you know I I would have to speak French. I'd have to improve, and so yeah. So I can say I've been yeah I've improved quite considerably since I I now speak to my cousins in French, and they look at me like oh you have a little French accent. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so, uh, so you know, accomplished both of my goals very well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, congratulations, honestly. But um, you. I'm wondering, do you speak any other languages? Uh, yes, yeah, so I speak English, Kenya, Rwanda, French, Kiswahili. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to, to get a bit of Spanish as well, but like just, you know, I'm, tr I'm trying. I'm doing Duolingo during, oh. COVID, during lockdown. I'm just always on just to pick up. I did a few classes in, in undergrad, so I always wanted to learn Spanish as well. Yeah, Spanish is a great language, honestly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. living in Paris, like what was it like yeah. going to school there, mm -hmm. interacting with people, I mean, meeting new people? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Paris was, I feel like everyone, we have this beautiful um, notion about Paris before you get there. And I did, I had the same thing and I got there. And I mean, for me, maybe for other people, for me, I was a bit underwhelmed, you know, like, uh, I feel like I, like, I didn't, I didn't see what all the movies were alluding to. Um, and I mean, I think that kind of had me just like, wait a minute, what is this? But then it was great. There are a few things that were great about it, but I felt like I'd been cheated <laughs> in a certain way. 
Um, living there was, was interesting. It was good. I mean, it was easy to adjust. I would say that thankfully because I spoke French. So, um, I didn't have such a hard time adjusting, but I did see my friends have a harder time adjusting because Parisians are not very, they're not very welcoming. Very few are welcoming to people. Um, especially if you don't understand the language. So if you go to the grocery store, depending on where you're at, um, if you, uh, you, you genuinely cannot understand each other, they'll definitely act annoyed and irritated and then not even try to help you. So that's what I noticed. And even I had situations like that when I couldn't express myself in a certain way at that moment and the person would not be, you know, willing to help or try to understand me and would just immediately just write me off and just be like, I'm not, I'm not, this is not my work. So yeah, so that, that was, that was hard to watch and experience at times. Um, meeting friends was also hard, I would say, but I do feel that uh, because of the school I was in, I was very comfortable and in the little bubble that it gave us so I don't I feel that I didn't do enough in my first year to actually make French friends um even though it's hard though it, it really is hard to make French friends but I feel like I I could have done in a lot more but I was a bit too comfortable in that setting um in the space that, that the that the international school you know gave me yeah so but later on I did make a few French friends but that's because you know I was working and I and I could meet people and and then yeah so and then that's when you kind of your experience shifts from it being you being an international person living in Paris to you kind of being an international person navigating Paris you know it's very different um uh yeah so it was interesting in that retrospect and then figuring out and finding people that are similar to you um, in terms of like how they see the world, what their goals are. I feel like it's really hard to find. So you find that most of your friendship um, circles are based on like one thing you're in common. So you have a bunch of people you're friends with and each one you have one thing in common. So you can't even put those people together. (laughs) So you just meet people individually that's something I noticed and but then I met like a group of diaspora um, Africans and it was lit (laughs) (laughs) after that it was it was so much fun Um, and I was fortunate because not everybody gets to meet people who are you know who who kind of come together for more than one you know more than one thing in common it's very rare um, I'd say in Paris wow Speaking of the diaspora, yeah. were you able to find and connect yeah. to people from Rwanda? And how was that experience if you were able to do so? Well, so I, again, I didn't, I, it's on me. So I, I always, so I always do this thing where I don't want to be comfortable. So I never really reach out to Rwandans like that or go into their space because it tends to immediately be that's all you're going to do and then you won't be able to kind of experience the city in its own. I feel like we have a tendency to do that as people. Once you meet your people who feel familiar to you, you just tend to just, you know, stay with them and then you don't move out a lot. So I try not to do that, but I felt like I should have because I think that I would have seen a different part of the city if I did that. I met them really late into into my my stay in Paris I think I met them right before the the lockdown so there's really not much we did yeah, yeah. I regret that I, I think one if I if I regret one thing it's that it's it's doing what I did in Nairobi in yeah. Paris but the thing is it's not the same like I yeah I don't think it would, it's not the same thing um yeah so that's one thing I didn't really interact as much okay um, with Rondans. Mm-hmm. that's very I don't want to say interesting, but I find it a bit strange because it's like you would think you'd automatically go for people from your community and look for them. And then all of a sudden, you're like, yeah, no, I want to do this on my own. Like I'm in a new culture. I need to face everything on my own. That's like yeah. that's actually brief, to be honest. 
like <laughs> I mean I did I did kind of gravitate towards Kenyans mm. um but again also it's because one of them we were in the same class so it's not like I went to group mm. meetings and all of that I never did that so yeah so you might yeah I, th- I was crazy <laughs> I don't know why I did that <laughs> But literally, uh, yeah, so I, re- I I felt like you need to see the world differently. Like mm-hmm. if I'm if I'm in that group that I'm comfortable with, then I'm not even going to do a lot of the things that I would do because, you know, to be, you know, uh, Rwandans and Kenyans, even though we move, most of us move and we get it and we adapt and we, we meet different people from different places. We still stay with with the culture that we we grew up with, and we still stay with those things that we we can judge. And I felt that um, I don't think I would have experienced as much as I did if I if I kept myself in those groups. You know, like you mm. don't even know, you don't even realize what's going on out there or, or how things are. I don't think I would have. I don't honestly. Yeah. I don't. And um, yes, I missed out on a few other things that would have come from that. But I feel like. Um, I was able to kind of meet new people and and mm. and just be in different groups and 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 have friends with people I probably would have never never been friends with if I was in those groups. Yeah, that's a good point. That's yeah. a valid point, honestly. But then, yeah. um, so how is it like living in Paris and navigating your way through Paris, being somebody from Rwanda? And what was that like in terms of like stereotypes or interactions with native French people? Yeah, yeah. Now, I it, I don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing being Rwandan because most people really didn't even know where Rwanda was. So I'd be busy like, oh, but I lived in Nairobi. And they're like, oh, safari. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but most people, and if they knew Rwanda, mm. they'd just be like, oh, Hotel mm. Rwanda or Kagame, I know you're president. It's one of those things. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then I think as well, like, um, people really didn't know where to place me. Funny enough, I don't, I don't get it. I guess it's because you don't see a lot of East Africans mm-hmm. in, in France. So native French people, even, um, even um, uh, African like descendant French people would have trouble placing me. Um, every time a native person tried to find out or trying to figure out where I came from, I'd get the, you know, Martinique, I'd get Guadeloupe, I'd get Cuba for some reason, I'd get Brazil, but I think that guy was trying to hit, so <laughs> no, <laughs> I didn't think it, <laughs> but yeah, but like, it was all that, oh like, my. and yeah, and I think so it, it was very interesting, like, I didn't even feel Rwandan until I had to say I was Rwandan, I just mm-hmm. felt black. You know, like I just felt like I'm, yeah, I just felt like I'm a black woman because ultimately they couldn't place me. And speaking English as well, they they didn't get it. They they could they definitely couldn't place me even more. So I just came off as I just came off as black. You know, Um, that's how I felt. That's how yeah. That's how I I I not. That's how I felt. I was navigating. Um, and then when we would come to different conversations, then it would come up that I'm London, but I felt black, <laughs> which was yeah. interesting to kind of uncover because I've always been a woman, an African or a Rwandan woman living in, in Nairobi. But this time I just felt black, like you just feel black. So you don't have a specific, like it, it, nobody places you in a specific spot. So you just, you just move as black as a black woman. Yeah. Go, I can relate to everything you just said. Honestly, it's been my experience as well and the experience of so many other people. That's why I wanted to do this series because we have to talk about what it's like being an immigrant. It doesn't even matter your color, but like an immigrant in France. Yeah. yeah. And thinking of what you just said about being seen as black before even being, being seen as a woman or Rwandan, how is it for you mm-hmm. going to other European countries? Um, so the other European countries I went to was um, the Netherlands. I went to Amsterdam and Geneva. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, Geneva, I don't count Geneva because I was with family mm-hmm. and I didn't navigate it by myself. So okay. I, I, I never count that experience. But Amsterdam was interesting. Um, it just, I mean, I felt a, a tad bit invisible at times. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but I, I did. Like, 
know, France, you like, I, of course, of course, you see the stairs, you see the stairs. There's even a guy who literally um, did not want to sit next to me in, in this, in the, in the train, I could tell, you know, you, they come in and, and they do the whole shifty shifty and there's a yep. seat next to me. Yep. And you know, you, you can tell that that person doesn't want to sit next to you, yep. but then they, they don't have a choice. And so they sit and they're pissed. So yeah, so, um, so there's those, those little things, but I, I really, like, I don't think, I really felt a, a tad bit invisible within Amsterdam and then, we we went out to see the tulips garden and all of that yeah. and i remember that one old guy who was he was renting out the bikes that we were you know gonna take and he bought his poodle and we were all like oh my god such a cute poodle and and then he was like yeah like you and the poodle are they like like the same and i was like wait what so in the middle i'm just like what i'm thinking maybe it's you know language barrier maybe whatever but I'm just looking at him. I'm like, are you trying? Are you are you trying to say my hair looks like the poodle? And so he was like, yeah, yeah, your hair, but also because you're just cute and nice and like. And I was just like, that don't really feel. I see that you mean it as a compliment, but I I can't. I don't know how to receive it as one. <laughs> and then you have to be nice because I'm in the middle of an outside Amsterdam. I can't be rude. <laughs> so I was just there looking at him like, okay. And he just left with his little poodle. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> so yeah, so it was it was interesting. I, I, I wish I literally, I'm going to do this though. I will go to other European countries for sure. That's on my list mm, because I wanted to do that last year, but then COVID happened um and yeah but like even going outside I, did, I wasn't I didn't go outside Paris which I regret so much because I was either working mm -hmm. or in school so the time between was really really um I didn't have much time so but I really want to go and see and experience those because Amsterdam really was an eye-opener um, so I wanted to kind of experience the other places and see what, what's up, but yeah, but really crazy things like that would happen. And I'm just there like, okay, all right, this is not awkward. <laughs> but yeah, so that's my, my show. <laughs> I know, so I that know. That poodle story, it's just it's, like there, like what, what, yeah. Yeah. why? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, okay Sonia <laughs> okay <laughs> I don't even know like how to respond to that because I'm just in shock okay yeah, yeah. so let's go back to like surprises but in this time in a French context so what was mm -hmm. one of your like biggest surprises about moving to France like coming from Rwanda and moving to France um where do I even start there was so much <laughs> <laughs> One was how dirty the city was and smelly the city was. I was just like, what is this? Um, especially during the summer. Oh my God, it's a different type of stench in the summer. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just crazy. Um, but one thing I appreciated was the fact that you can just move around. I really loved the fact that I was so independent in moving around. Mm -hmm. um, coming from a country that's, you know, very... You, it's either you know buses or, or cabs but like, like the metro was such an efficient way to move around and I enjoyed it and I love the fact that google maps will just take you anywhere um and how that kind of made me feel very independent um but something else I just could not understand is just the their their bureaucracy like their systems are just so annoying and 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 a lot of people say oh my god those are first world countries but i'm like how is it that your your governmental systems are so like horrible like just just they're just not they just don't they don't they don't work efficiently yet you have all this i don't know if it's experience you you don't have as much of a population as some places but you're it's just mad like i think how you had to apply and had to do paper applications for every single thing and i was just like why don't you guys have it online like 
it was it was really I still don't understand it like it's just crazy to me you know everything like I thought maybe some things would be you know online no but every single thing you needed to write you needed to send in a paper application like I don't even in Nairobi I barely went to the post office like I barely use the post because everything is online yeah or you just go there you know but here listen I had to be <laughs> I had to quit and I had to start you know getting used to the post office and how that worked and sending papers and then your documents being lost I was just like what is going on so that's one thing and I think another thing was the the whole process I don't know how it is in Lyon but like so I lived we lived in Palm Town which is just outside so it's in uh, Saint-Saint-Denis and uh and the prefecture was I feel like was designed the whole process is designed to kind of break you and break your spirit before you even get in front of the the the, the guichet like um this the fact that you're waiting in a line from six you have to get in the line you have to get to the line at 6 30 a.m and they open at 8 30 you're standing whether it's heat or whether it's extreme cold you're standing there waiting to get in 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 this place so that you can be granted um visa to stay or granted you know and i felt like that whole process can be better i just think it's very degrading and I think it's it's made to belittle immigrants and to make them feel like they don't deserve and to feel like they need to do and need to, you know, it's, it's, it's like you need to suffer to kind of get what you need, which is just, I don't know, I don't know. It, it really makes me feel some type of way. I hated it and I hated how the process was not, uh, was not clear cut. Like you would read something on their website, you get there and they're like, no, this is not how it is. And you just wasted a whole day to just being told, like, I just thought that process was just very degrading and it's just very sad. Yeah, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. And like, it's mm -hmm. interesting that everybody that I've done this segment with, they've been like, yeah, the prefecture is just like the worst part about being in France. It's every single one that I've done everybody has brought up that fact. It doesn't matter if they're in the French Caribbean or in mainland France. It's just very sad, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Hopefully things will change soon. I, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. I feel like that's, that's something they do. They break you. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I feel like, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't know if that would change. I don't know. Hopefully, but I yeah. <laughs> it's just like yeah. so depressing, but it's very sad just so mm -hmm. depressing mm -hmm. it and is. It is. with that in mind um like what advice would you give to foreigners who are interested in moving to paris or in france in general uh, yeah i'd say do your research you know do your research if you can find somebody in paris to help you because um i think for us in terms of accommodation it i had I had like, cause you don't know the place as well. You know, you can Google, but you don't know the place. Mm -hmm. Like you need to get there to understand like the different arrondissements and what, what's there and which one is, you know, much more um, open to black people and which one you would, you would basically be scared to be in. Um, and so it's research and just hopefully if you can find somebody there who would help you kind of transition and help you get around. Um, especially when it comes to all the things that you need to apply for, because once you get there, you need to apply for it, like Navigo at a certain time, you need to apply for your social security, which, which listen, that's a whole other uh, like stress, like the perfect tool is stress, but social security, <laughs> <laughs> listen, oh my God, like, and, and tell you like, you just need somebody to kind of encourage and tell you, okay, this is the ropes. Mm. Don't give up. Because a lot of things in Paris, if you give up and that's how they go, like they will stress you, but you don't, don't give up. Mm. That's my thing. Don't give up. And, and, and another thing is um, like research because, because jobs is as a foreigner jobs are hard to get. So I'd say also research and then be ready to kind of, 
do jobs that you didn't expect to do or be open to doing that in order for you for that to open doors for other things um yeah that's what i would advise i'd advise yeah and and kind of don't don't put your expectations too high i think we tend to do that um yeah just you know like it's 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 like any other i feel like it's like any other city however it's just harder to navigate especially if you don't speak french so mm. you have to be very honest with yourself and plan ahead yeah. um i have friends who really they came and they barely spoke english and they thought it would be easy because you know we're all in the fashion industry listen it wasn't <laughs> especially yeah. if you're brown brown and 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 black it's 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 a it's a very cuz your your experience um if your experience is not in another european country it's disregarded mm-hmm. it's like you had no experience like i would go in interviews and i had probably like four years experience and nobody was checking for that they were asking me about the internships i had mm-hmm. in paris and not about my running a startup in nairobi yeah yeah so that's the reality of it as well <laughs> Yeah. I think your advice is very very good honestly like everybody should really take heed to what you just said because it's very important especially for the internships. <sighs> okay. And for our final question. Yes. <laughs> if you could move to any other country or city where would it be? And it cannot be in Rwanda and cannot be in France. Oh my god, Barcelona. So it was between when I was deciding where I would go, it was yeah. between Barcelona and Paris. Oh wow. I really want to go to Barcelona. I think I don't know why. I don't know what is <laughs> like that gravitates even even during COVID. I was like, okay, let me move. Mm-hmm. Not back to Rwanda, but let me go to Barcelona. Yeah. <laughs> but the cases were so high there. I was yeah. like, girl, are you going to move from one hot spot to another? Yeah. So Yeah, but Barcelona, I feel like one it's not as gloomy as Paris. Mm-hmm. Two, I've always wanted to, you know, I've always wanted to perfect my Spanish and, you know, and I don't know, I just feel like it's one of those cities that um it's 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 of course there's racism every in every, you know, predominantly white country or brown country, but like I I I don't know, something really pushes me to 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 go there and I really hope I can. I really hope I can yeah. can go and just live my best life. <laughs> and work in fashion. You want to work in fashion in Barcelona? Yeah, uh, sorry. Do you want to work in fashion in Barcelona? Um, I don't know what, but at least the problem is Barcelona is not really known for their fashion, so I don't know. Maybe. No. <laughs> they're not known they're so, really not yeah. but i mean baby steps baby yeah. steps you know yeah find out what they they're known for listen i would, even if it's just living there for like a couple of months mm. i would love to just do that and just be like okay guys i'm going to barcelona for a bit going to live my best life and i'll come back speaking spanish <laughs> and then that's it <laughs> that's it like just yeah and uh, oh another one is south korea so mm. um but then i also want to learn korean <laughs> why not you already speak like how yes. many five five is it four, four. i would yeah. say four i never yeah. want to add a language that i cannot like consistently hold a conversation yeah. in so four okay. um yeah so yeah but i i i yeah i don't know there's like but there're probably other cities but like barcelona is is one of those that i would really really want to like i'm even mad my my aunt and my uncle went there for a vacation before they came to see me in paris yeah. and my aunt came to paris she saw paris and she was like girl you made the wrong choice barcelona really? was the life oh, and wow. i was just there so sad <laughs> oh my gosh that makes me so sad now <laughs> oh no she was like you came to this stinking city <laughs> She's mm. like Barcelona is so much better and I was just like y'all couldn't wait like yeah. you couldn't wait you really could yeah. <laughs> to tell me this yeah. yeah but it's okay I I believe that I will get there cuz I I never thought I would be if you had asked me beginning of 2017 
mm-hmm. um, hey Sonia would you be moving to Paris in like the next six months I would have told you you're you're crazy oh um but yeah. that's what happened so yeah. I I think that you know everything is I Barcelona is still is still a, a, a good prospect <laughs> I think you can get there honestly especially since you're in France like you can get to Barcelona it's not going to be that difficult yeah 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 it's just the whole aspect of your African and they just look at you like what 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 are you yeah. going to do <laughs> yeah there's That's that <laughs> there's that there's, it literally we have you know this passport power and um mm. that 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 has its perks in, in you know when you move in you want to move yeah so mm. Well, thank you, Sonia, for spending this time with me and talking about Rwanda as well as France and Europe. And if you guys would like to keep in contact with Sonia, you could always follow her on social media. I'll put her information in the description box below. And is there anything that you want to say before we leave? I just want to thank you for doing this. I feel like we, I've seen recently that when Black women and brown women are, are um, documenting and, and saying their piece and kind of telling um, their experiences in different countries. I feel like we never really had this where we're honest. Yeah. Um, I think everybody wants to, you know, you know, they want to overhype where they're, they're staying and yeah. so that you, you know, aspire to, to get there because that, that's what they feed on. But I'm happy that we're seeing a different um perspective now everyone's very honest and and um and I think especially with Emily in Paris I think black men, women were like wait a minute we're not experiencing this <laughs> we're not this is not our life but yeah so I really am happy to see you know spaces like yours giving opportunity for you know women to immigrants to come and just say their piece and say how it really is you know the absolute truth the ugly you know the positives and negatives and I love that that that's being incorporated because we always hear positives, and um, and people don't get the we, people don't get the information they need. Yeah, like to kind of properly decide on certain places. So yep. yeah, so thank you for doing that. You're welcome, Sonia. Thank you for like <laughs> agreeing to do this. Honestly, of course, <laughs> it's of really course. great. I love I love chatting with you and learning so much from you. Honestly, it was great. So thank you. Thank so you. Much. Okay. <laughs> Peace.